2011 Toyota Sienna. Uh, the brakes, whenever you quickly apply the brakes, you get a violent shimmy. Um, as long as you're uh, pushed down nice and slow, uh, it's fine. What I think the problem is, is I think the brake rotors are glazed, which means they've got hot spots uh, in them, which are uh, spots where the, the pads don't have the same uh, gripping effect as on other parts of the rotor. And that happens when the rotor gets hot, you hit a mud puddle, water puddle, you know, you splash water up on it. It literally work hardens, you know, a half a thousandth or a thousandth into the metal and creates what they call a glazed spot. Um, so what my plan is, I'm going to pull these off. I don't have a brake lathe and my lathe isn't big enough to mount this rotor uh, on it. So I'm going to actually turn these. This is my own personal vehicle. I'm going to turn these on the mill with the rotary table and we'll see how that comes out. So uh, this is more of a machining uh, video than it is a uh, automotive. I'm just going to pull this whole caliper off uh, the rotor. I'll, I'll slide right off. I'll clean this uh, mating surface up here, which is where the uh, wheel bolts to. We'll bolt it down to the rotary table, and I'm just going to spin it on the rotary table and just take just a very, a, a very light cut, uh, just as light as I possibly can to get down to fresh metal, and uh, then I'll flip it around and uh, we'll do the other side and hopefully that'll take care of this problem uh, if it doesn't then we'll go to the next step whatever that may be but uh, I think this is probably going to take care of it so anyway I'm going to get this taken apart and then I'll set the camera up over there and we'll get it mounted up on the rotary table and get started okay I got the rotor off I've cleaned up inside the hub and outside. That's where it's going to bolt down to the rotary table. Let me show you my setup here. What I ended up having to do, okay, so this is an 8 inch rotary table. My original plan was I was just going to uh, bolt this face of the rotor straight down to the rotary table, turn this side first, then I was going to flip it over and just set the newly machined surface, the inboard side of the rotor, directly onto the rotary table. Well, the problem, this is an 8 inch rotary table. From here to here is about 9 inches. So the rotary table was sitting on this rough, unmachined surface. So that wasn't going to work. So I had to come up with something else. So what I did, I found some 6 inch stock that I had. I trued it up in the uh, lathe, uh, bolted it down here to the rotary table. So now, and I got another piece here. So now I can just bolt the hub or you know set the hub straight down on that aluminum piece set that in there clamp it down and I can flip it both ways and be able to do that so hopefully that will work good um, let me get it all set up here and we'll see what happens okay what I originally was going to do is just mount one of these straight across the hole there and then clamp it down but then I decided you know what this will put even pressure all the way around the circumference of where the hub bolts to so that should be a, a better deal so that's what this is a setup right here so hopefully uh, hopefully that gets her done we're gonna see anyway okay
just going to bring it down and touch I'm going to touch it to the surface then I'm going to come down with the knee about five thousandths fire it up I'll come up with the knee and we'll, we'll I'm going to get the vacuum because this is I think that's cast iron vacuum as we go. Okay, that was only a five thousandths cut. And I think I'm happy enough with that to leave it alone. I'll show you the final results here. Could have went maybe another couple thousandths. Got rid of that little hot spot right there, but I mean I can't even feel it with my fingers so all in all now I used to work in auto shop and I've turned a lot of rotors on a brake lathe and as you know you know a brake lathe comes in you got two carbide cutters and they start at the the, the uh, inner uh, part of the diameter and they work their way out now when you're done and a lot of mechanics wouldn't do this but when you were done turning a rotor there was a, an adapter that hooked on and it has a sanding disc and as the rotor spinning, you hit this with that sanding disc and it put an omnidirectional finish on the rotor. And the reason they do that is no matter how good of a finish you get with those two cutters coming out, it's like a record player. So you literally have little grooves working from the inside out. And whenever your pads clamp down on the uh, rotor, it li they literally try to screw themselves outboard that's what used to always cause the uh, brake squeal whenever disc brakes first started coming out you'd get really bad uh, uh, disc brake squeal in fact the police hated it whenever their cars started coming with disc brakes because they couldn't sneak up on people because when they had started applying their brakes the brakes would squeal it could be at night their lights would be off and they'd get brake squeal and you know whoever they're trying to sneak up on would hear that and, and take off and then they start figuring out, you know, put shims on the brakes, put omnidirectional finish on the uh, rotors, and that way the the uh, the pads don't know, you know, they just squeeze straight down, and they tr you know, they they're not trying to go in or in or out. They're just they're just you know, got a neutral finish, if you will. But they called it an omnidirectional finish. The reason I'm bringing that up is this this has already got an omnidirectional finish by by uh, machining it like this. As I was spinning it. That cutter is going around, and it's giving it, it's give it uh, omnidirectional finish right off the bat. So that was only a five, th about a four thousandths cut. So that's good. Uh, I'm going to flip this around, and we're going to do the other side, and uh, we're going to see what it looks like. And I wasn't going to show this, but I will. Um, I'm just checking the run out. So I've got it set up. Hopefully you can see that. It's got probably about, I've already done this, but it's got about four thousandths run out so far before we turn it. Anyway. And after we get done here, we will uh, check uh, check the uh, consistency of it all the way around. 
Have drop the knee about five thousandths from zero, so we should be about ten thousandths higher than where, where we need to be. Okay. Other than the initial spot where you come up, all in all, it's a pretty good finish. This mark right here is just where I just dragged that uh, vacuum across it. But uh, I think that'll do it. So now let's, this is what I want to do. I'm just going to do this down and dirty. I ain't going to get real technical here. I'm just going to take the calipers. Okay, we got about one inch, 60 thousandths right there. One inch, 60 on the money. This one here is about one inch, 61 thousandths. And what's that say? 60, 59 and a half. So, that's gotta be a lot better than what it was. I'm going to dismount this, mount this back up on the uh, car, and then clean up and take it for a test drive. All right, here we are. We're taking her for a test drive. Now, before, <coughs> whenever you apply the brakes fast, you'd get a very violent shimmy. So we'll get up to about 50 or so. Oh yeah, much, much, much better. That'll work. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a ton better. That's the way they're supposed to work. And I think it was, one one rotor did seem to have a little bit of warp to it, even though the pedal didn't pulsate. But uh, I could also tell by machining them that uh, the one that actually seemed to have the little bit of a warp had uh, glazed, glazed spots. So, I think we're done. Anyway, that's all we got.